Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about uh, isoropia, which is a, a Petra interface to the Zoltan load balancer. And then also we're going to talk about importers and exporters, which can be used to basically import and export data from one map to the other. Uh, and of course all of this is part of the series on uh, Pytrolinos that we've been talking about over the last few lectures. So again, Isoropia is in a Petra, Petra interface to Zoltan. So Zoltan is a Trilinos package in, it, in and of itself. It's a very sophisticated load balancing package. And uh, Isoropia is basically a wrapper on that that uh, takes in a Petra data structures, vectors, matrices, graphs, and then uh, performs a load balancing operation on them. So let's talk briefly about what load balancing is. So uh, we may have a, a structure that we want to analyze that say looks something like this and of course you know we, we, we mesh it up for with uh, say finite elements just for an example and we want to partition this part uh, such that we can you know of course we're, we're going to in the end um, apply some forces to it and we want to see how it deforms and of course I've drawn it drawn it very regular for a particular reason I'll come back you'll, you'll see why in a second but if we uh, did something very naive like say we, we partitioned it such that we just in space broke it up such that this part of the problem went to processor 0 this part went to processor 1 this part two, this part three. Well, you can see right off the bat that processor two and three are going to be doing far more work. They have a lot more of the part to analyze than processor zero and one. So this would not be a very well balanced problem. In fact, uh, you know, if this was some kind of uh, integration in time or something that was being performed, what you'd have is that uh, processor 0 and processor 1 would finish their tasks way before 2 and 3 and then just be sitting there idle waiting for uh, something to happen. So um, a more sophisticated load balancing scheme would be to take the part in space and distribute it equally such that um, maybe this piece here would go to a processor uh, this piece here would go to a processor this piece here would go to a processor and then this piece here and of course uh, you know it may not be obvious from the way I've drawn it but what I've intended to imply there is that e each of those have a nearly equal p amount of operations to be done so this would be a, a more sophisticated load balancing and this would be uh, something analogous to to an RCP type uh, uh, RCB type uh, load balance operation and um, so th this would be one type of load balancing so you know as part of uh, isoropia have you lots of options as to how to uh, choose to do the load balancing and I've highlighted two that are probably going to be your most common use cases RCB which again would provide a load balancing scheme like I've sketched out here or, or uh, hypergraph type. So briefly let's talk about hypergraph. It, it may be that um, part of your uh, uh, you know part of your um, structure that you want to analyze is uh, more computationally expensive or has a different structure such that you know for example it, it might be that this this part uh, here has uh, um, some non-local features and this part here is all local and what you would get then uh, when you assembled it uh, the data into matrix form for a solve what you might end up with is part of the uh, part will have a very uh, quite dense structure so these X's just re represent non-zero elements in a matrix and then you might have another part that is not so dense. It just has some, some uh, local features. 
And uh, if you use an RCB type uh, load balancing scheme, basically what you're going to end up with is different rows of this matrix uh, being sent out to each processor for, you know, so this would be processor 1, 0, 1, uh, you know, 2. Uh, and so what you see, obviously, there's more work to be done. If you imagine if we were just doing something as simple as a matrix vector dot product where, you know, this is a matrix A and this is a vector X. If we're doing something as simple as a matrix vector dot product, uh, there's more operations to be done on processor 0 and 1 than there is on 2. And again, this is going to re result in, a, in an unbalanced scheme. So uh, what a hypergraph partition will actually take that into account such that you, you, you might end up with uh, a, a, um, a more balanced partition. Now, now you have processor 0, 1, 2, 3, and then say 4. Um, so anyway, th this is the type of uh, why you want to might use a hypergraph type partition uh, over just a plain RCB type partition. Um, so other notes there uh, that uh, you know Isoropia takes in some inputs, which basically is how you specify which type of um, load balancing scheme you want to use, and they're uh, specified as uh, Tethos parameter lists. So I have an example to show you how that works. And then there's other features of Isoropia as well. Uh, coloring, I think uh, when we talked about petrographs, we talked briefly about what uh, graph coloring is. So Isoropia has some features for that. And then ordering as well. So ordering would be a, a way to precondition, say, a matrix such that it has a tight uh, banded structure uh, by re reordering the nodes. Uh, and this would, this would uh, allow your iterative solvers to uh, work more efficiently. So I have an example here uh, of load balancing in a Petra vector. So you'll notice uh, there's, a, there's a few new import statements at the beginning, namely uh, Isoropia itself and then Tethos uh, because we need it for a, a parameter list. So um, this part of the code should look pretty familiar. Basically what I'm doing is creating an unbalanced vector. So there's going to be, the vector is going to be of length 10. And initially, it's all going to be on the rank zero processor. So I have this if, if statement here. And then I construct a map and, and a Petra vector. And then I just put some random numbers in that. And so when we run the code here momentarily, you'll see uh, the, the unbalanced vector printed out here. OK? So this is where the magic happens then. This is the, the load balancing part. And you'll notice it's, it's quite nice. It's not that much code. It's not you know, e any more code than, than our uh, kind of when we did it manually when we were using MPI for Pi. Um, and th in that situation, we didn't even have perfect load balancing. So here, you know, and, and by the way, we're not going to get it. it we, Isorobia won't guarantee perfect load balancing. Uh, you, you, can, you can set some criterion that, um, you know, basically adjusts how accurate the load balancing have to be. If you want it to be as perfectly load balanced as possible, you can set it there, but obviously there's some expense associated with that. So there's some kind of some heuristics in there that give us you know, the best load balancing we can get at, at, the, at the cost, uh, the computational cost. So anyway, the first two lines basically, the first line instantiates the parameter list. The second line sets the load balancing scheme in this time. We're going to use RCB. Uh, and then here's the, the isoropia commands. Basically, we create a partitioner, uh, which takes in uh, the vector that we want to partition, x, uh, and the parameter list that we just created. And then we go ahead and uh, create a redistributor from that partitioner. And with that redistributor, we redistribute x, OK? And that's going to be stored in, in a, uh, x balanced. So then if I. Uh, basically take a view of what's in X balanced as in a Petra vector and print that to the screen, we'll see what the balanced vector is. So let's go ahead and go over to the command terminal, uh, command line, and uh, take a look at this example. So if we just start off by running this example on two processors, um, oops, sorry, I have to
get uh, my environment set up here. Apologize for this. Okay, let's try again. Just clear the screen so you can see what happens. So you see there at the top, uh, we start off with the unbalanced vector, which prints an empty array on processor two, and there's the the full uh, random vector of random numbers on on the other processor. Uh, then you can see that Isoropia kind of prints out some uh, information about the load balancing method, and then it prints out the balance vector. And you can see that the, the two processors now are, are even. So, and we can go on to uh, three, and of course, ten is not divisible evenly by three, so that you'll have some, you'll have a uh, some, you know, an odd, an oddball there. So you have two two partitions with three elements each and one partition with four. And we can go all the way up, uh, say four. Uh, we can go all the way to ten, even. Where now we'll just have, uh, you know, each processor or each task will have just one um, uh, element each, okay? So that's an example of balancing in a Petra vector. So this is a, just a similar example. Um, we're going to create a, a, a CRS matrix here. Okay, this is a, look, should look familiar. We're basically creating it. Uh, it's just our finite difference type operator. And so we're going to create the matrix. Uh, the only difference that we've done in the past is that um, this, this matrix is created uh, all it's unbalanced, so the entire matrix is, starts off on the zero rank, uh, and that you can see that when I create my map here at the beginning. All right, so then the commands are basically exactly the same. Uh, we we instantiate a parameter list, we set the method, and this time we're going to use a hypergraph type partition, and we create a partitioner this time with the matrix A, a redistributor, and then we redistribute A. Okay. And, and if we run this, then you could you could print out A and see that it's redistributed. So here I haven't printed out the I haven't printed out the unbalanced, uh, but I hope you'll you'll believe me that you know if, if you just take a look at the code, it, it will the, the whole matrix is created on the zero rank. So if we just quickly go over, uh, we can run this example. Because of the way Petra overloads the print statement, and uh, you'll see that uh, I've only ran it on two processors, but here we have the kind of elements that are on processor zero, uh, and then the elements that are on processor one. And of course, we're not kind of trying to, it, it, the print statements overrun each other, so you have some additional elements from processor zero that just got printed, you know, dumped to the screen out of sync with the rest of them. But, you know, if, if you run this, um, uh, or if we would have printed out A, then you would have seen, you know, before the load balancing, then everything would have been on rank zero. And, and now we have, you know, some on processor one. So that tells us that it's been properly balanced, okay? And we could also, you know, go to, say, three processors. But so now you have processor zero, processor one, and processor two. And in this case, it actually print it to the screen uh, in order, so that was nice. Okay, so we've already used uh, import-export operations in one of our assignments, but I basically explicitly told you how to use it without a kind of a lot of detail um, about exactly what they do. Um, but, you know, so basically an import-export is a way of getting us an efficient way of transferring objects uh, from one map to another. And so these could be, um, uh, you know, say gl global IDs of vectors uh, or, you know, data that are in vectors uh, associated with certain global IDs according to two maps. And so, uh, you know, the actual way you use it is you create an importer uh, with this command of Petra import and then you put in the target map and source map. And for an import operation, the target map will be a map containing the global IDs uh, from which data should be imported imported to each processor from the source map. And then the source map 
is a map containing the global IDs that should be used for importing the data, okay? And so we'll have an example uh, in the next slide, uh, but I just wanted to say that export uh, is basically the opposite way. So it exports to each processor the target map from the source map, okay? So here's an example. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create two maps, a standard map that is evenly distributed across all processors. I'm sorry, a standard map that is where all everything is on rank zero, and a balanced map which is evenly distributed across all processors. Uh, the vector X is going to be created with the standard map. Again, this is all on processor uh, zero. And it's just going to have uh, data that, that ranges from 0 to 10. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then Y is going to be uh, created according to the balance map, and it's just initiated or instantiated with all zeros, okay? So then if, if you run this, well, what you'll see is I'm going to print the unbalanced vector X and the unbalanced vector Y. I'm sorry, the balanced vector Y, which is initially going to have all zeros. And then I create an importer, which is going to import uh, from the standard map to the balance map. And then this is how you actually call it. So you, you'd say, uh, Y is where I want to import to. I'm going to use the import command uh, from X according to the definitions in the importer. And then I'm going to use a Petra insert. Uh, we could also ha say a Petra add if we wanted to add values uh, X to Y, we could we could have a Petra in add there, okay, and then finally we're going to print out the balance vector. So of course the best way to understand this is to actually just run the example. So we're going to start off running on two processors. So you see there. Um, the unbalanced vector X uh, is, you know, has nothing on the second processor. Oops, sorry about that. Try again. The unbalanced vector X has nothing on the second process on the one processor, and uh, the entire data on rank zero. The balanced vector Y has been instantiated, but it's got all zeros. We run the import operation. And now you see that the balance vector y has been filled with the va with the va values from vector x. Okay, and we can continue to do this on three processors. See there. So initially it's all zeros. We run the import operation, and now it's been distributed. And we could go to four processors. Again, initially everything's on rank zero. Y is instantiated in a balanced way. Uh, but it, with all zeros, we run the import operation, and now we have the values uh, across on the processors. So finally, I just wanted to give you an example of how you might use this, uh, you know, a more common use case uh, for this in practice. And so uh, from here up, the code is identical to our um, isoropia matrix um, balance operation. So what we get is a balanced matrix A uh, according to the hypergraph partition. And then a lot of times we'll balance the matrix, but then we'll have other data that we need to get into the same form according to the map of what we just balanced. And so here's an example of that. So what we, we're going to do is uh, right up here, uh, th there's actually two additional commands where I created an Apetra vector X according to the standard unbalanced map and then I just filled it with random values. Um, now I'm going to create a new vector Y according to the balanced map. So let me get rid of that. I'm going to create a new vector Y according to the balanced map that we just r was returned from Isoropia. Okay. Then with that, I can create an importer from the balance map and the standard map, and then I can import the unbalanced data X into the balance vector Y according to the importer, and again, using a Petra insert, and then I'm just going to print out the, the value Y. 
So th this one is not quite as interesting if you run it because I'm only printing out the final example, but uh, the code is there if you'd like to try it out for yourself. So this concludes the uh, lecture on isoropia and Petra importers and exporters.